It's May 11th and uh, some fruit trees just came in, some bare root fruit trees I ordered last month. We got a few cherry trees and an apricot tree. We've got the hard rand. And apricots are usually self-fertile. Uh, I have a park more already planted, or a more park. And it's even better to have two uh, varieties within, you know, 50 feet um, to get even better pollination. I have a Skeena cherry. Uh, which I believe is a self-fertile variety as well. And, um, but it will pollinate the Rainier, which needs pollination. It's a beautiful bush cherry. Yeah, we're going to plant this hard ground. Got a really nice spot. Uh, picked out, started digging the hole. Nice big hole. And a really nice sunny location that's protected. Hole we got started. It's on a nice down slope here. We got water nearby. It's an apple next there. There's a big double magnolia tree. We're actually down to some topsoil here. I think that's about it. Two and a half feet. Some nice rotten wood here uh, from a deck I tore down. It's a uh, poplar wood, so quite good for decaying. It's got the odd nail in it, but that's all right. A little bit of old firewood here, a little bit of pine and some fir, I think, a couple pieces of those. Just give the uh, tree some nutrients later on. Of course, there's going to be lots of wood chips around as well on top. This will give it some uh, long-term food. Down, you know, 10 years from now, it's going to start feeding off of this a bit more. Of course, there'll be lots of nice soil on top. A bunch of red wigglers in here. A little bit there. Now we're gonna put all that grass from the top in, upside down even. That'll decompose, make some better soil. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of some of the air pockets by just putting in a bit of this subtop soil in between the wood first. Soak that in with some water. Now I'm going to put all the sod back in. A whole bunch of, of uh, ash from bonfire and it's kind of mixed with some sand. You put some of that in there. Now we're just going to mix back in what I dug out, mix it in with uh, well rotted cow manure. I'm not going to take the rocks out because I want some drainage in here. The soil is very compact, um, so and I can take the bigger rocks out just by hand. Sometimes I like to sift it. but. I think it's totally necessary. And I got a bunch of peat moss as well. We're going to mix some of that in there. Lots of red wigglers. I took 
took out a lot too before I bagged this stuff last fall. a bit of bone meal and some alfalfa meal, organic, and we're just going to use the bone meal kind of in place of the uh, mycorrhizae. I you know they're very different, but just the bone meal will just help the uh, roots uh, take off. Mix that. You want to Always keep the crown level to the ground, not over deep or too high. I actually want the roots to go in and spread out instead of twisted around so that they grow out into the ground. Uh, with the potted ones, if they've been growing for a year or more in the nursery, you know, they can be clumped up and you really want to pull those apart really well so that they <clears throat> have a tendency to spread out and find nutrients past your hole, ideally. Now we're going to see which direction you kind of want. I think I want this sweeping direction this way. Big root going towards the water there. Keep going down a bit. It'll work its way up to the new growth. It likes the surface where all the wood chips are going to be and breaking down. It's where they really like to feed with the good mulch on there. New root growth will grow up and, and feed from that. But for now, I want the roots going down kind of deep so they hold the tree up well. Spread some of these out, going all directions. Kind of like planting the strawberries or asparagus. Spread the roots out, crumbs out. Some sheep and goat manure. Alright, we got some kale, treating varieties of kale, and some sage. We're gonna be trading this for a truckload of uh, sheep manure. It's fairly fresh, but that's fine. It can, well, it's from last year, but it's not decomposed fully, so it works good as mulch, especially on trees. Put the stuff straight on my raspberries and it's totally fine.
walk on it. It doesn't compact. It's like a peat moss in there, which also works in a similar way. But the soil structure helps it uh, not so much. So. So it's uh, September, beginning of September, and uh, this is the beautiful hard ground apricot we planted earlier this spring. She's about a 5 8 caliper uh, trunk, uh, bare root, and we walked her off at about three and a half feet. Really good growth. Uh, Got these really nice branches now. Nice fully leafed out. Really impressed with the growth from her from this one season. And I got a lot of these squash plants been producing abundantly. pear it's doing really well nice heavy set fruit I thinned it <laughs> as well but there's a lot on here perhaps we thinned it a little more looking really good I've sported all the branches a notch just for the branch to sit in 